So for this exercise, we're going to do some activities having to do with failure groups. The first thing I want to do is to create some failure groups. So let's do that right now. I'm going to create some disc groups. All right, I want to create three different failure groups with um, three different uh, um, redundancies. So the first one I'm going to create is I'm going to call it external. Before I actually ch choose external, see that there's a failure. You can specify failure groups, but when you choose external, that goes away. So um, also note that you can have one or more um, disks for a, a disk group for external, but that's not true with a, um, a normal and high, which we'll see in just a second. So this one should be created. Next, I'm going to create one that's normal. I'm going to call it normal. I'm not going to specify failure groups here. I'm going to do that in just a minute. Uh, so, but I'm going to choose one data file and see what happens. No, you need to have at least two. So, okay, I'll pick two. And last, I'm going to pick, I'm going to create a third one, and I'm going to call it high. And uh, let's say I pick two, and it says, no, you must pick at least three. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so now just because I chose, um, I didn't choose any failure groups doesn't mean failure groups weren't actually created, which we'll see in a minute. But the first thing I need you to see is that for the external um, disk group, I created, I added one disk, and that was 10 gigs. For the normal disk group, I had um, two disk groups, or about 20 gigs. And for the high disk group, I had three dis disks, or about 30 gigs. But notice that the effect of the usable space is all the same because in the normal disk group there's one mirror and in high disk, disk group there's two mirrors so effectively these are have all the same amount of space so what else I what <clears throat> additionally what I want you to see is the following Okay, so for the external disk, there's a fail group assigned to it, and uh, um, even though for external um, fail groups are irrelevant, so, but for the normal disk group, they're also um, assigned um, and they're unique, as as are the high. They these are also system generated and they're unique. Now for this part of the exercise, what I want to do is actually create some um, disk groups with and specify the failure groups themselves. In the earlier exercise there, we uh, let it be system generated. So let's create our, our own failure group names. So right now I'm going to skip the external redundancy disk group because you can't specify um, the failure group names on in that particular case. So I'm going to start with normal and high. So let's start with normal. And we know from before you have to have two disks. So let me just say we call them the same. Let's see what happens if I call them the same. It says no you can't do that so you have to have unique names. You have to have at least two, actually, two failure groups. And 
let's create the alignment. And as we saw before, we have to have at least three disks vert high. That's no good because you have to have at least three failure groups. Let me do this just to show you that it still fails. And now I'm going to rename them I1, I2, I3. And this should work. So to summarize, you can create um, disk groups in any type of redundancy, external, uh, normal, or high. And um, if you don't specify the failure groups, those will be system generated for you. However, in the external disk group, or I'm sorry, the external for external redundancy, um, failure groups are not applicable. In the case of normal and high redundancy disk groups, um, you can specify the failure group names if you wish, but you must have at least two um, this two um, failure groups for, for normal redundancy and at least three uh, for high redundancy. And that's it for this uh, exercise.